right, good morning everybody. This is the brochure that we don't print, but it's on facebook.com. And it tells you where you are in the garden. We are about here right now, right by bed A. So this is where we're starting. And we're just gonna do a quick run, kind of some highlight peonies, new ones blooming, old ones still blooming, uh, meaning old in the sense that they started blooming two, three weeks ago. And that's a Robin with us as well, I hear behind us. And on the reverse side, uh, but also on facebook.com, you can see the garden in tour order. Somebody said the other day, but they're not alphabetical. Well, if they were, you'd have to run from here over to there to find the next letter in the alphabet. So this takes you right through the garden as it goes bed A, 1 through 12, bed B, 1 through 29 actually, it turns out, etc. So that's on Facebook. So enjoy that. So this is your virtual directory and map. And we're going to kind of roll through a little bit today. This is kind of a joy because here's A1 from China. It's actually literally a, a, a route that came in from China. And it has its own story that people will learn about over time. But this one is our first bloom on a second summer. It was planted last summer and now it's giving us its first bloom. Gully. Gully. And I don't know always the forms, so I'm still learning. This looks to me like it's uh, going to be an anem anemone, where the guard petals are there, and inside there's this buttery looking, it doesn't look like stamens and pollen anymore, and anthers it looks like um, kind of petal. So it might be the staminodes, could be Japanese. We'll find out. This one is Japanese. This one has the little petal uh, staminodes that look like petals but they have the little anthers on top for the bees to come and get the pollen so this is Ada Neva and this has bloomed maybe since the last time we met and this is crinkled white it's just really terrific little egg sunny side up looking thing with ruffled crinkles in the petals and that beautiful inside uh, and this, I, I'm not going to bother telling all the forms. This is from the Reinhardts themselves, from their own garden. And it's so beautiful. It's got a beautiful bomb-like uh, center that just rises up like 4th of July out of the center. So now the stamens and pollen have evolved into, this is a full double with what they call bomb-like tendencies. And it also has a great sniff, but we're not supposed to step way back there. This is supposed to be pink, but we're, we're letting it be a deep pink. These five peonies are from the Reinhardts, and that's from their garden. And you see how they thrive. I mean, they've thrived in Missoula already for decades and eons, you might almost say, since let's call it pioneer days when they were brought in. But they are just healthy, healthy, healthy plants. So this is bed A. And here's a new flower in bed. Oh yes, there's the sign that's going to get updated with some uh, nice scans to take you right to Facebook and let you also contribute to the peony garden if you'd like to help along because it always needs help financially as well as occasionally we've had great volunteers coming and helping with the staking. Here's one of the stakes, I'm holding it. And they go in and we put strings around, elastic, beautiful strings to hold the peonies up as much as we can. Here's a first bloom and the only bloom of Judy Becker. This is new this year. It's another big double, wonderful double peony. And the doubles are the sort of traditional ones that just make everybody happy around Memorial Day, in this case, Juneteenth weekend. Now we're on Monday after Juneteenth, and this is a wonderful new addition to our American culture and acknowledgement of the past and hopeful future. Here is Bride's Dream, is it? Does it show Bride's Dream? Or Princess Bride. Princess Bride, thank you. And it's just a beautiful, it looks like a perfect wedding flower, you might say, Princess Bride. So it would be fit for a princess on a wedding day and more. Uh, kind of moving along down here in this direction. This is the finished except for two buds. So watch for these two buds. They are going to be Paonia peregrina. This is an original ancient peony. It's the oldest registration in the garden, 1768. 
the peregrine part of it. Peregrine means to wander, to peregrinate. And so to wander, we think it's maybe because this, instead of rising up, it just spreads out beautifully. Here's a, just a, looks like a box of Kleenex flowers. <laughs> I mean that in the best possible um, way, because look at that abundant blooms, a set of blooms there, with a bud still waiting to come out. These are what we call the lactiflora. We don't call them, that's the official thing. When they're lactiflora, it means each stem can have multiple buds. This is not the same peony, but look at those multiple buds on the stem. There's the lead bud and the side buds. And, they, and that's one of the joys of the plants, is that not only do the different stems bloom at different times, um, but also the different buds within a stem can come out at different times. So this is really quite magnificent. Angel cheeks, it's a bomb, literally called a bomb form, because the center rises up like as if it's an explosion of petals and color. And so, and the bombs, I think, generally at least, have the same color inside as the outside, the guard petals and the inside petals that have evolved from the old-fashioned stamens and pollen. And here is uh, who? Armistice. Armistice is a good idea. That was November 11th and the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And so that's a long time ago, but armistice is a concept that uh, let's withhold our arms and stop fighting each other. And these peonies are getting along just fine with each other. They give us a good model. This is so beautiful. It's one of the faves. It's got a, a buttery center. I have to look to see which one it is because I've already misnamed one of them. So this is bed B, and they're all sequential. And B, as in a bee, there's a bee flying right now looking for some pollen. Um, B, Courage, Angel Cheeks, Salmon Dream, Armistice, Showgirl. That's Showgirl. Showgirl. And it's really showy. And here is uh, Coral Charm. And coral charm is that a great coral color that has come into the peony world that probably did not exist until um, the hybrids came. Here's a seed pod. Soon we're going to be taking out all of the seed pods and what we call deadheaded. We're always going to cut back to a juncture so it shows beautiful foliage. That's one of the great things about peonies is it'll look like a beautiful garden of foliage all summer. Different foliage for different plants from different plants. Other beautiful plants coming along. This red grace is one of the favorites. It's really finished now, but it held so beautifully. It's something you can look online to see the pictures. There's already some pictures from bed A and B from the 2021 peonies, and they're going to be posting more pictures coming up. This is the Ito, which is the cross between a tree. Here's a tree over here where I'm pointing. And the tree has bark, sort of like a lilac bush, you might say, sort of bushy bark <laughs> down at the bottom. And then everything comes up out of that bark every year out of the tree branches. And then this is a cross between the pollen of a tree and an herbaceous peony, which the stems are just vegetable, you might say not bark, all the way to the ground. So this is veg vegetable. It has the stems of the herbaceous and the the blooms and the foliage of the tree. Yes, you can look in there and you can see that there's no bark. So this is a case of the bark is no worse than its bite or something like that. So that was a bad pun and it didn't work. So here's the Ito bloom or bud. This one is not as pointy as some because it's already uh, started opening. But th here's an example of where they're pointy. The buds have the pointiness of the tree uh, peonies blooms but all of our trees are finished now so you can't see them except online probably and these are the ferny ferny guys and let's move on to bed C maybe go backwards a little bit through bed C so we'll start at the end of bed C and here's five peonies that are a gift from Peter and his wife Stickney I don't know her name for sure and they're good friends of the Reinhardts and they wanted to contribute to the garden and we're at the end of the bloom of what we are almost certain is called Festiva Maxima, the maximum festival of blooms. And these guys have a great scent. Everybody's gardens somewhere have Festiva Maxima, even if they don't know that they have them, because it was a very common, popular, but 
special hybrid. Moving along, we've got this great Ito, that Bartzella. It's like, I have to look it up in the, every time. You can look on almost any uh, peony supplier and find out the parentage of Bartzella, but it might be the pollen from Alice Harding combined with something else, and it came out as one of these hybrid Itos, which is a whole new form. The first blossoms from an Ito, and they weren't even named Ito yet, Mr. Ito in Japan um, created almost accidentally, but very determinedly. After thousands of failures, they finally got these Itos to happen, and they got named after him. And they are the pollen from a tree, again, and the uh, ovary, basically, of the herbaceous plant. That seems to be the combination that finally worked. Here's great foliage. Here's Shirley Temple at the end of her little display this summer. Beautiful bloom back here, Shirley Temple. Here's Bowl of Cream. And when you look at, these are already getting the, on the end of their useful life, but there's a creamy area inside here when it's just coming through with this feathery kind of, uh, like a coxcomb kind of protrusion of blooms. That's a little bit more, the, the bowl of cream. There's cr the bowl and there's some cream, I guess. It's creamy and bowl everywhere. It's a great flower. Maybe even here's some of the younger younger blooms. So you can see that creamy, wonderful, yellow, buttery uh, center in there. So that's a beautiful example. So just kind of moving along. Even so, even the ones that are these, uh, just to remind ourselves of the term, the lactiflora means many buds per stem. Not every stem will have many buds. And even uh, in the single bud, single bloom per stem plants will sometimes have an extra bud off to the side. But these side buds give us another treat, you know, and like goes on. One stem might produce flowers over several weeks. Here's one that's still pretty young. And here's a brand new bud waiting to open. Here's one that's just opening. Here's one that's fully open, that kind of thing. Just within one plant. Lactiflora meaning several buds per stem. This guy is, we thought was going to bloom, but we're just glad that it's thriving. And so its blooms are giving themselves another year to form. Other bees are happening back in the back there. Um, we have a little mysterious, I'm going to walk in the, step in the garden here. And back here is a little wonderful peony. We liked it so well that we found a place for it to, to just hang out. And it's, we call it mystere, which means mysterious or mystery, because we don't know yet its name, if it is, in fact, a named peony. But it's so beautiful that we wanted it to have a chance, so we added, so now we have plant 12A and 12B, because we didn't want to have to say this was 12 and then go in and call this one 13 and 14. And so rather than bumping up the numbers, you have 12A and 12B for that little extra mystery flower. There's some that have great fragrance. Duchess de Namur is worth a sniff. And it's in the front, and we tried to get the sniffy flowers, the fragrant flowers, the scented blooms in the front row so people didn't have to step into the garden to smell every peony because invariably these uh, labels get sort of caught by tennis shoes or whatever. And so thank you, dear ones, for not uh, wandering too far in, in at all into the garden. Here's another incredible bloom. This is so, look at my hand compared to the bloom. Just, it's important to keep this in perspective that you can't see. It's way bigger than my hand. So some say I've gone from being a pianist to a peonist. And so I'm doing both now. And I've taught piano at the university for 43 years, if I may say, and just retired May 1st. But these blooms are not retiring anytime soon. They are going to be here in a hundred years, still doing their thing. So we have another great crinkled white, or not, yeah, crinkled white, that same one that you saw. I called it like sunny side up kind of uh, flower, beautiful. Um, and a beautiful, uh, more, and this is, sorry, this one is Belleville. Not Bellevue, um, Washington, but Belleville. There probably is a Belleville somewhere. We'll look it up and see what town and state Belleville comes from. So this is a, another double, just beautiful. I don't think this one has much fragrance, but let's, but it's fresh. I mean, it, it has just a sniff, you could say. I call it a scent. This is another Ito. We have 
17 trees and 13 itos in this garden. I figured it out. We have 230 plants exactly. And that number is probably going to stay stable because there's no more room for anything else. We might have to change out a plant here and there if something doesn't thrive. But this, look, there's one more bloom coming. Come and see it in person. And this is another ito. This is one of the 13 um, itos in the garden. And you can look for them again with that pointed foliage and the pointy bud of which the point is gone because its point, big point is to bloom. <laughs> and so now it's blooming. So that's the end of bed C. And maybe just to go over to bed E and your directory will tell you there's 76 peonies. And just look at the overview. I think we need a big uh, stepladder for Ron, our wonderful videographer, to get up on the stepladder and do a nice overview. And when you come into a parking lot and you look at this garden, even now as it's beginning to go past its prime, past its peak, but still lots of beauty yet to be had, these are Eleanor Roosevelt or Mrs. F.D.R. Roosevelt. F.D.R. Mrs. How do they do it? Mrs. F.D. Roosevelt. That's what makes it sound right. F.D. Roosevelt. And it's so beautiful. It's this glorious light pink uh, double bloom kind of a graceful center. Eleanor Roosevelt was a gracious uh, and very prominent woman and this was named in her honor. And this was uh, maybe the Reinhardt's favorite, Mrs. Reinhardt Chin Wan. And so thus we put three plants right around the, the Reinhardt rock, R&R, &R. <laughs> rest and relax at the garden. This is garden lace. Another one of those beautiful creamy centers with the guard petals in a different blush pink, but the centers are yellow because they sort of emulate and, and they literally evolved from the stamens and the pollen or the anthers. So if this has anthers, and it may, Gary does better than I do, Gary being one of the other six committee members and uh, founding people of this garden, and these anthers determine uh, that it would be Japanese rather than uh, anemone. But I have to learn more about that. This is a first bloom of somebody named Geraldine. So it's Jerry for short. And this may be our last bloom of the year coming commando because, and yeah, we're still video on uh, Jerry here, beautiful. And this is its first uh, summer. We planted it last summer. Prominent growth last summer allowed the bulb or the root, I guess, root um, stock to have enough power to send up a bloom already. And this is a first year bloom as well, if it makes it. And we're letting them bloom where sometimes you don't. In this garden, we're trying to make sure they are what they say they are. And sometimes they aren't. The label got messed up at the nursery or something. But mostly, we're, it's correct. This is fabulous. So Gay Paris, this has a bicolor kind of effect. And sometimes they come out and they're sort of in the same color family and then pretty soon the center lightens. And so you get a pink and white kind of look. This should be uh, an anemone or a semi double No, it should be an anem anemone. But, you know, somebody can look it up and tell me I'm wrong. Gay Paris. Um, Miss America is just, wow. Here's Miss America, this is Miss Congeniality, and this is Misunderstanding, and this is Misbehavior. I always thought those would be fun awards for the Miss America competition, Misconstrued. But these are all Miss America great blooms. And these should be semi-doubles because they have a center with pollen and stamens, and yet they have... Uh, they begin to have the in, inner petals as well as the guard petals. So that should be, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm often wrong, so I'm still learning. I think that's a semi-double, but it could be, what would it be if it isn't? And then it should be Japanese, but it's too complex, I think. Look it up. Okay, many, many happy returns. And you can see why they're happy, because look at that great pink. And so many, of, we have like so many blooms, even if the plants and the garden as a whole is getting past prime. Individual flowers are just begging to be loved and enjoyed and appreciated. And so come and see this, this wonderful peony, Shawnee Chief, almost died way back to nothing last year. And then it sent up two more volunteers after it had a little health issue, after a, a little frost issue and a little uh, fungus issue. And it was dying back and we thought it was done. And lo and behold, it sent up another set of 
plants and stems and it bloomed even one last year and now it's several blooms and this lactiflora you can tell it's got more buds coming so these won't come out for another several days and that may be for a week before it gets big enough to open so there's plenty to come and see this is fabulous this is our tallest peony in bed E so far but these are trees that have already bloomed back here and these trees have oh this is a special one I'm gonna just hint at it. This is Maxine de Cornu. Souvenir, the souvenir de Maxine Cornu. And whoever she was, this flower is beautiful and complex. But if you look in the catalogs, it will say the flower tends to droop and hide and not show itself. So there it is. You have to very gently because it'll snap right off. But these will eventually be tall. That's why the trees are in the middle. And so they're in their third summer growing taller and taller. And this was the surprise because this is supposed to be no taller than here's 36 inches. It's supposed to be maybe 36 to 40, but here it is coming up on 46 or 48 almost inches. So that's a gorgeous, gorgeous bloom. And we don't mind that it got this place because when you look at the whole garden, it's in the what we call the bump outs so that people can get close to other peonies without having to walk into the garden. So this is a stop and enjoy. This is a viewpoint, <laughs> scenic view from this point, the bump out. So thank you for staying in the sidewalk and walkway area. And this gorgeous peony is just tall and strong. We only actually tied it up at... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wow, I have to find. Maybe it's not even tied up. Yes, it is. It's tied up at about 18 inches, and so it's more than double that height and still hanging up strong. So that's a good sign. We're actually learning this year which peonies topple when they get above sort of the healthy point of you see what's happening. And they don't necessarily break right at the string. They just break... Uh, where they want to and so we're going to try next year to know which ones we're going to stake up higher and keep them up or upright this one doesn't mind at all having just one set of stakes these are interesting things to observe dawn pink beautiful peony that beautiful yellow center this should be a single this has a stamen and the anther and that's the st the stamen i think includes is it's the filament somehow and the anther and then the ovary basically the carpels are inside there and they will become the seed pods and F and then the bees can bring all different kinds of pollen so the seed pods here are not just self-pollinating they always are making new hybrids but only the ones that have been carefully de designated from which parentage get named um, and vetted unless yeah unless there's things i don't know about but here's that beautiful single peony single bloom lovely pink here's a great uh, red supreme i think i have to look at the name hiding down here where did the name go uh -huh. da -da -da -da. oh it's probably named from the other direction maybe oh man i hope we didn't lose a name but i can look it up but anyway it's um maybe this is that's red supreme it's, um, Ga uh, oh i know something garnet oh topeka garnet thank you thank you so they have names because they've been registered with the american peony society or the british horticultural uh the royal horticultural society this is one of the great foliages the promenade these are just examples so everybody they're still bed f and bed d this didn't bloom at all last year and um, um, I have to think Garden Peace. It had this great white bloom. Look at this lovely. I'm not even going to name them. Just do a scroll. A stroll. This is one of the great... This is maybe the most fragrant peony in the whole uh, garden. Madame de Verneville. So it's F26, worth coming and taking a sniff and you should still have Two, or two more weeks at least of sniffs, because look at all those lactiflora buds waiting to come after these guys take a rest. And this is wonderful, polar star. Think of that, the North Pole or the South Pole, the Southern Cross even maybe. But these are definitely um, earned that white uh, 
North Pole, like just a bed of snow with the sun, the midnight sun even, and the snow together, something like that. Ravida has a beautiful pink. Gauguin is finished for the year, but a great tree coming forth. This is our tallest peony in the garden, White Innocence. And it's, um, bloom. here's the last open bloom. I don't see any other buds waiting, but maybe there are. But this is an, a pretty fresh blossom or bloom. And this is, for, it's supposed to be no more than 48 inches tall, but 48 inches is about right there. We found these great green stakes that sort of match the plants for staking and then tying them up. And I had to put some extra ties because it's got 58 inches. It's probably 60 inches when it's, the bloom is up there. This is a second summer of a plant that almost died last summer, and now it's happy to be, not only happy to be here and presenting, but look at those incredibly complex and beautiful blooms. Again, my hand tells that it's bigger than my hand. It can reach an octave. <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving another beautiful color here. This is uh, Leslie Peck, and we, um, just gorgeous. Here again, we're getting uh, this probably could be Japanese because these are looking. Okay, next we're looking at Felix Krauss. It's Felix Krauss, uh, beautiful, beautiful colors, beautiful center rising up within the bed of uh, pollen uh, creatures, <laughs> part of the peony. And here's Rosella, gorgeous, gorgeous pink. And sometimes the back side of the petal is lighter than the front side, and so you get this beautiful 3D effect. Both Felix Krauss and Rosella here have that kind of depth that comes from darker and lighter shades on the front and back sides of petals. That's kind of fun. This is the second year, but first year of blooming, I think, for Paladin. And it comes out almost looking like a rose when it first the opens and it in a way stays rose-like. So there's such a thing as a rose farm. I don't know if that is the exact uh, decision. Here comes a brand new plant, one of the ones that hasn't bloomed yet, Elsa Sass. We had Henry, I think, Sass somewhere else in the garden already bloomed, but Elsa's coming up here, new buds. So that's bed F, down the right way is bed D. Madam Butterfly came out today. I didn't notice that. That's the it's not thriving yet, but we think it's going to make it. So it's kind of a vulnerable plant. It's got a little start down there that's just having some trouble, struggles. So bed D, we don't know when the native peony from Montana, one that grow, look at that squirrel, that grows in Montana, way that low foliage back here, if I might have to point a little bit where I'm looking at, and in there is that hugging the ground foliage. And this plant does not get tall, and the peony itself is not a particularly beautiful flower, but it's native. It's native to the Western Hemisphere. It only grows in the 3,000 feet or higher elevations of Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Oregon, and, and Washington. It doesn't grow in California as far as we know. Here's an up-and-coming bloom from Renown, if you show that bud. Renown is another one of our 13 nitos, and it already bloomed, but it decided to send another bud that's yet to open. So come and take a look at B D4. The, they all have numbers and they all have a, a bed. They tell what bed they're in and what number within that bed. So it's all sequential. This is a, a bloom we're going to stake up next year because once it got tall, it just hangs down. And it's not bad, but it isn't showing itself as well as it can and did at first. So that's we know for next year is going to be a staked. Here's pink pom-pom still sending great. Look at all those multiple buds per stem and they last long enough that as the la later ones come on the early ones are still often hanging on so you get a, a bouquet in each stem rather than just a one bloom and then wait for the next one. You get a bouquet. This is a first year blooming for Nippon Beauty. I believe this is Japanese. Pretty sure it's a it's the next level up from single, meaning that the stamens are evolving now into what they call staminodes, which have still have the anthers and pollen, but the, the filament is looking more and more like a petal. So that's how peonies have evolved over time. Uh, here's some new ones coming in. And here's, I will be the gladdest under the sun if I don't pick a flower. Thank you for not picking the flowers. 
they have their own time in their own life. And we have had a peony thief earlier this spring, but maybe even that person decided that everybody deserved to see every bloom. We hope so. This is a first bloom for Bouquet Perfect. I'll be coming through with my ca own camera later and taking a picture of that new bloom. Lovely. Bouquet Perfect. So next year, that watch for it next year, that's D26. Finishing up here, this uh, Eden's Perfume, you can guess and you will be correct that it has a beautiful scent. And so I'm going to sniff Eden's Perfume. And it's, it's pretty subtle, but it's there. Some peonies have zero fragrance. And this is Eden's Perfume. So it's just a little hint. And in fact, we, we learned that this one is not actually celebrity. It's, we think, uh, Sarah Bernhardt. So that's an interest. That's one reason we got to keep track of all these wonderful plants because even though they're beautiful, we want them to be what it says they are. So we're working on that. Um, riches and fame. Uh, oh, top brass here. This should be top brass is one of the really complex flowers, and it has this rise. That's not its own pink petal. It's a shared petal, but it rises up out of the center, so it has a plume almost. I don't know that it qualifies as a bomb where that explosion happens out of the center, but it definitely has d three dimensions. So that guard petals and the petaloid kinds of used to be pollen only, but now are complex. And then that fluff that comes out of the top. Okay, so at the end of the bed D here we're getting, this is Renato. Renato we have Revita and Renato and all these different names. And that's a, a lovely peony that also is just sending new buds up almost daily. Some of them are ready to be deadheaded soon, this coming week, and then others are just yet to bloom. So we have seed pods that we don't know what's inside them because it can be whatever the bees brought. Here's back in the, here in the corner, uh, the back row is Coral Charm. I want to make sure. Coral Charm. And the petals come out quite coral colored and then they fade, but the, they retain beauty for quite a while. And this is probably the last bloom now of Coral Charm, that particular plant. Whoops. Yeah, that's fine. And do tell is like doing its first thing. And Red Charm is coming. And Red Charm is a beautiful plant. And this is the last peony of Bed D, uh, which is a tree and it's called Coral we call it. They, trees often don't have fancy names. It's just what they do. Tree, peony, coral, pink. So it's got a name that describes its bloom. So that's the garden. So if you get a chance to look at this whole garden, it's fabulous. It's in its third summer, th third season of blooms, and it's probably, I would say, by a category four, <laughs> meaning it's four times as blooming as last year, and the plants are four times as prominent, and the, and the foliage is going to be beautiful for the rest of the summer, even though the blooms, this being June 21st, right, today, the, and the first day of summer, right? So these blooms will continue till at least July 4th, at least, and maybe beyond. Um, and so come and see the garden several times if you can between now and July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th even. Uh, the first blooms were May 12th, that's two months. Two months of blooms at the Reinhardt Peony Garden at the University of Montana, the first and only public, pe public garden dedicated entirely to peonies west of the Mississippi River. And there may come to be others, but so far this is the first and therefore the only. Uh, so come and witness and see it and enjoy it, appreciate it, help out if you can in some way, let us know. And uh, contributions are welcome as well because there are expenses ongoing. So thank you so much. Thanks for enjoying it. This is Old Faithful in bed in E20. And it is just great. It just came out a few days ago, so every bloom is still holding. There's not a single bloom yet that is sort of fading. So it's not only comes out beautifully, it holds. And that's fun.